Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. Giving you the best and the worst and uh, everything in between of all the video games ever, only here. We were last checking out Donkey Kong on the Intellivision and being a little disappointed, pretty disappointed. It's currently October 1982, let's see what is next. It's time to go to the arcade in Japan and check out Dorodan. Another game that I'm not familiar with. Maybe you had to be there to play it. And here we are. We're there to play it. Let's take a look at the artwork for Dorodon. This one is... It shows hit bit on the other side, but um, uh, the artwork is interesting because it's not like a cartoony artwork. All we need is a four-way joystick, and it's alternate play, so you and your friend cannot play at the same time. There's the arcade marquee for Dorodon. I don't know anyone that um, uh, brought this one home. We're familiar with this, this, this game because it may have only been in Japan. That we got this one. There's the better artwork we want to look at. Dorodon. It looks like a cartoon we're going to play, which looks pretty fun. It has, um, it, it actually does justice to the gameplay once you get into the game and you understand what you're doing to move around. I love it. There's an example of the screenshot, and that's all we have. Whether it was real or not, only a couple sets. Let's go to the arcade and play some Dorodon. This is by UPL at sometime in the beginning of October 1982. This marks our 455th video game we've played here on Chronologically Gaming. And this is the very first video game that's by UPL. As the attract mode plays, we can get a, a little bit of an idea of how it works. We're going to be running around as not the cartoony character we saw in the artwork, but rather more like a yellow blob. And as you move around, you're going to be flipping different screens. Very, very nice. It already looks charming. It's a top-down maze game. It takes place on one screen, like uh, Pac-Man and lots of the other ones we've seen in the arcade. So it's a, it's a maze-type arcade game. All right, let's put a coin in and check it out. Already sounds good, and let's go. Round one, we got to change everything to white. Got it. All right, so you can see I'm the yellow character on the screen. As I move around, I can flip panels. As soon as I flip them once, they change to white. So I'm trying to change every single panel to white, but I can even use it to my advantage. I can pick up the question mark, and what's going to happen? Oh, enemies turn into ice cream cones. Awesome. And they've already changed back. Darn, let's pick another one. Can we get more ice cream? Looks like only one enemy so far. So we're still eating things in the arcades. Pac-Man definitely is a huge influence on video games right now. Now let's get that one out of the way, and this one. Looks like we only got one more. Can we do it before he gets us? <laughs> Very nice. I'm not sure, Chiptune, who the developer is on this one. It has the color like Ladybug, but uh, it doesn't play exactly like Ladybug. Darn, he already changed back. I couldn't get my ice cream yet. Let's flip it again. Who's this guy in the center? It's almost like they're doing the area in Pac-Man that's the place where the the, 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 the enemies go back whenever they, they've died, but he's just sitting there in the center. Don't let them touch you, though. You will die. Well, this is classic. It's fun. It's playing music constantly. It's one of those lost arcade games because it's just so similar to, to so many other games that are out there. And when I say just so similar, I mean really just so similar. Uh, this is considered like a top-down maze game in the arcade style. You know, very simple, takes place on one screen. Oh, here we go, last one. Go, 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 Rick, a run for it. Got it. And of all the videos we played here on the show, this is our 201st game that plays in that formula. That's how many games are out there. Aside from all the, you know, arcade games we played too. Yeah, it is very similar. Yeah, it, it's similar like that. How the bugs spawn from the center one at a time, like Ladybug. We've already seen Ladybug in the arcade, too. Oh, now we're switching it up. It can't... It doesn't just change to white. And we have the uh, ice cream cones to go for, too. In the arcade, this specific genre that plays and looks just like this, in the arcade, this is our 58th game we've seen so far. I really love the swirling vortex of tornadoes. It makes some of the some of the different barriers spin, and if it hits the enemies that are in the way, then it knocks them out. Cool power up used there. You got the fire to avoid on the side. Yeah, it looks better. Definitely looks better than the Donkey Kong fireballs on the Intellivision. Darn, I missed it. I was trying to get into the vortex to whip the guys around. 
And there you go. Game over. All our lives are gone. Hey, it does say Falcon. Yeah, so maybe it was developed by Falcon. To my knowledge, everything uh, is pointing to UPL as, as the creators for the game. And it is kind of similar to Lock and Chase, but you're not locking in the, the barriers. You're actually flipping them around. I know, right? It is kind of feels borrowed from it. All right, let's put another coin in and go again. And let's go. This current release is displaying as 1983, but um, from majority of sources, they all claim it's around October or uh, fall, uh, late fall 1982. Yeah, that's a good point. The difficulty changed big time. I would think that if they said everything changes to white, then you go to the next level and you have to change everything to a different color by flipping the panels multiple times, but no, it doesn't, it doesn't feel that way. Darn, I almost had him. All right, let's see if we can do it again. Go and go. Yes! But that was the first level. We get the nice ditty of music. I love it. Extra bonus points. Okay, change it to white again. And then we got the bananas to go for. Yep, two, one... Now I'm curious to know, can you block the enemies in? Like, create a, a... Everything that's white warps around the vortex. Got it. Can you do a complete trap like you do in Lock and Chase? <laughs> Good point. We have not seen the, that arcade game that you speak of that starts with Q yet. Oh yeah, this is a lot trickier to, to, to whip the ramps around. Darn, I didn't get him. I might be able to get him. Wow, it's so quick. But the game feels fun. It works really well, gameplay-wise. Nope. <laughs> and the concept is easy. It feels classic, too. It's like a, a, a video game that I, I should have played in the golden age of arcade games, but didn't. Oh, you lead them to the fire and they die. I like that. Nice. Yeah, the the, the difficulty ramp seems a little bit steep. And um, as, as far as like continuing to keep pl playing over and over again, I can understand why people wouldn't want to, 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 to go after that. Yeah, Brian's actually throwing out a solid four already from the chat. Yeah, it's Pac-Man and Lady, but yeah, we haven't seen Qbert quite yet. So uh, if you got this in the arcades, it's be very fresh and new, and the idea would be kind of cool. Taking some tropes from Ladybug, a little bit from Lock and Chase, but um, uh, I like it. It's a pretty good idea. Plays really well and is fun. So I'm seeing some fours from the, the chat. As far as the uh, video games in the arcades, this isn't something that'd be excellent or amazing or one of the best arcade games, but I would still say it's, it's very, very good. Uh, a, a fun time. I'm going to say four stars. Obsidian's with me as well. Four stars, too. <laughs> That's right. So we'll say the same. Very, very fun arcade game. Not well known in the arcade. And there's Dorodon. Let's see what's next. Time to go to the United Kingdom and play on our Sinclair ZX Spectrum. This is ZX Drops. Let's play some checkers. Starting with the box. Oh, I think we got this one in 3D. Let's do it. Yeah, there it is. There's the cassette case for ZX Drops for the 48K Spectrum. Marking once again more Sinclair ZX Spectrum. This is our 95th game we've played on the ZX Spectrum Micro. Lots of games that are already available out there to play. That includes some of the typing games we played too. Uh, ZX Drops has 10 levels of play, numbered 0 to 9, making it suitable for beginners and experts. And um, the response time is uh, for level zero is almost instantaneous. At level four, it's about four, uh, about 25 seconds. At level nine, the response time is 13 minutes for the computer to think of your turn. Just bear that in mind. And then uh, it has a few other things that in the inside sleeve of the cassette. We don't need to check the look, look of the manual because that's pretty much what it is. For other versions, there's alternate ones. And it was available in different names, too, because you'll see when we pop it in. Let's play some <gasps> ZX Drafts by Chris Whittington, published by CP Software at some time the beginning of October 1982. There you go. It's also called Drafts Master in 1982. This is our 10th 
game of video checkers we played here on the show. I'm going to start with level number zero so we can get almost instantaneous response times. We want full capture search. Yes, sure. And then we want to do black or white. I'll go with white. This one is another uh, checkers game that you have to do a parser or you have to text uh, type in your coordinates. So if I want to move a piece, I don't have to I don't select it. I can actually say C3 to uh, D4. And then there you go. It makes the move and it's going to have to do that jump. So I'm going to try Let's move D2 to C3. So you have to know your coordinates to play the checkers game. And uh, this is pretty much what, it's, what it looks like. You understand that the computer's going to have to think before it makes its move. Oh, that's a great point, Paul. Now that we play on emulators, it, even though the cassette says it's going to take a long time, you can just fast forward everything, just like we do whenever we want a, a game to load faster. Good point. I know, right? Now, now, Nowadays, it doesn't really matter. Well, there you go. That's ZX Drafts. Of all the games you can play right now on a home computer or a micro, it is Checkers. It is a well done Checkers. We it, It's not using an interface that's as um, usual as the way you, you can point and click, but I mean, that's more of the fancy way to play Checkers nowadays. Uh, uh, the, these games are going to have, we're going to still lots of t uh, typing and coordinates for text games or for Checkers games still. So I'd say of all the games you can play right now, on home computers, it's still around subpar, maybe two and a half stars. I'm looking over in the chat. I see Brian saying two, Curtis saying two and a half as well. I mean, you have, you have to compare it to all the computers out there and compare it to all the other games that are out there besides checkers. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and it takes 13 minutes. That's true. If we wanted to dive in really deep and uh, take a look at all the board games, the video game board games that are out there, and take a look at how fast the computer can calculate it, then we'd say it's a better checkers game than all the others. Yeah. Marshall saying three, two, yeah. If you bought it for checkers, that's what you get. All right, let's see what's next. We're back to the arcade in Japan. It's time to play Dream Shopper, whatever that means. I have another game I'm not familiar with at all. Dream Shopper looks like a fever dream. This is the only screenshot I could muster up for Dream Shopper. This one, again, you only need a four-way joystick and an action button, but it doesn't tell us what action... Oh, that's right. It's the action button whenever you're in the game. Another arcade game that is two players, but it's alternate play. Let's go to the arcade and play Dream Shopper. This is by Sanritsu at some time at the beginning of October 1982. The only other game by Sanritsu we've seen so far was Mermaid in September 1982. Here we go. The attract mode's giving us what looks like a board game? It has lots of grids to pick up. So what you were seeing on the screen is the first phase of the game. Majority of people only see this first phase. So as it's going through the attract mode, it's almost like we're doing a game show where you run around and you're trying to uncover the tiles one at a time and get a certain number of points. If you can rack up the score they tell you to rack up, then that means you're going to be able to go to the next round and see the next phase. I really like to do that on the live show and see if we can get it all up. But while we're going around in that mode, picking up and getting all the points, you're going to be attacked by enemies that are on the screen. <laughs> looks like we're winning uh, bikes here in this version. Yeah, that's right. All right, here we go. Let's put a coin in and play Dream Shopper. I don't know if I'd want to. All right, here we go. Push and start. Our goal is 10,000 points. 10,000. So it's fla going to flash a few times. Let's not go for the bomb and try to get as many points as we can and not fall in the hole. Ready? Here we go. Oh, we picked up the frog, which means it's going to pick up a few of the other ones automatically for us. Gives me frog revives, though. That's funny. All right, so I'm just making my way around. Lots of frogs to be found, but it's giving us more points. There's 1,000. There's no way I'm going to be able to get 10,000 points. That's crazy. All right, I'm going to try going through this door on the left. Yep, warp around the side. And there's really... Unless you're lucky enough to find one of the power-ups, you have no way to attack the other enemies on the screen. So as I'm wandering around, I'm just avoiding them going through the doors. And I remember the bomb was in the top left of the screen. It does feel like Price is Right. <laughs> With whatever those guys are. We're at 5,000. We're doing all right. If I can get... Oh, man. See, they also have a faster speed than us. All right. I only got 4,000 points left. Let's see. Let's go on the left side over here. If you got a really good memory, you might be able to make your way around and get all the points. Oh, we fell in the hole. I forgot to look out for those two. I was paying attention to the bomb. Oh, that's a good point. The guy that's wandering around has the same color 
modes as Mario. He's really big right now, especially on the Mattel in television. Darn. All right, only 850 points. We got it. Right there. I just saw it. Right over here. Come on. Oh my gosh, we're so close to 10,000. I don't believe it. And we, we have no way to attack. All we're doing is going and collecting a bunch of stuff. All right, don't fall in the hole. We did it. 10,000. Now we can go into Act 1. So now we're supposed to be rescuing the girl. So it now goes through different acts. And it feels like a top-down maze game. And I'm collecting <laughs> I'm collecting I items for the girl we're supposed to be rescuing. But that's it. I lost my chance. As I was going to pick everything up and have to go back to the beginning. It begins with round two. And we're back here. So, bizarre case of the first part of the game feels like it's a, a, a gambling or a randomized game. But then you go to the sex, second mode and then it feels more like a, a, a game that you're, you're playing a, a maze game. Rescue the damsel in distress. Pick up her belongings a la, you know, Donkey Kong. Oh, gosh. Yeah, not going to happen. <laughs> no, and no, uh, no lagging. It's just the way, the way it works. There you go. Let's get today's high scores. Looking pretty good. All right, I want to go in again. I want to see if we can get to rescue the girl at the end. Ready? And go. And hit it. I went in before the show and changed the dip, dip switches to give us a few more lives to hopefully see the next scene. Here we go. I missed where the bomb was that time. So whenever you pick up the frog icon, it's going to go across the screen, and any other colors it passes by, you'll get the points for those. So it's still kind of random. Yep, there you go. Come on, more blues. No whammies. Come on, no whammies. Nope. Don't go Oh my gosh, and it looks like the enemies are random. I thought they were following me around. <laughs> I believe that too whenever I played it. Okay, looking good there. Nice. Let's keep going this way on the side. Yeah, I'm not going to follow the enemies. I thought they were chasing me down. But you also don't want to get trapped in the corner. Oh, okay, that works. And this version is round one, and they're going to randomize more after this. Too bad I don't have a power-up that can knock the enemies out. It's just escaping from everybody. So because of that, I would, I would, I would feel it's poor gameplay. Like, it's... There might be a power-up that's hidden inside that allows you to take out the enemies, but it just feels like I'm just going as random as possible to find the items, and there's no other way to destroy them. What does the apple do? Ooh, cool. There we go. This also feels like I'm, I'm kind of at a casino. All right, we're at 9,000, looking good. Keep going, give me some more. No whammies. Nope, no whammies. Don't block me. Yes, we did it, 10,000, here we go. <laughs> we need to get that much money. Oh my gosh, and then once you lose, then, oh, that's it, I already lost that fast. Once you mess up that stage, then you go back to this main shopper stage, or whatever they want to call it. There you go. So there's Dream Shopper in the arcades. Well, the second game mode, if you get to it, it's really not that impressive either. It's pretty slow paced. You know, there's really not a lot of um, a variety to it. And it's really not a maze game. It's more of just, you know, trying to get to where the girl is without being touched by any of the other enemies. So of all the games you can play right now, uh, I got to say the concept is uh, a miss, but it is interesting because I've never played anything like this. So it's original, but um, it's a, it's around the, the, the lower range of arcade games that you can play. I know, right? It, it has the same amount of the, the idea of going to pick up everything that Mario has to pick up before picking up the or rescuing the girl. Yeah, you of course saying it was just around average for arcade games right now. Yeah, there, there's a lot of concepts that are out there that are trying something new, but most of those we see on the home computer. Here in the arcade, it has the, the the color, it has the flashiness, you know, it has the music part of it. But as far as the gameplay, it's uh, it's subpar. I'm actually going to say two and a half stars of all the games you could play. I'm glad I was able to get to the other the other section so all you you don't see just the picking up the points and everything. I know, yeah, Marshall, it's meh of all the, the games you can play in the arcade. Very rarely do we see that in the arcade. Usually are the arcade games are tops. It's pretty cool. Yeah, three, three-ish, around the, around the average range. All right, let's see what our next game is. 
It's time to go to the Commodore VIC-20 and play Dungeon. Just Dungeon. Because it's part of Innovative Cassette 3, seven games that are in one by Clifford Ramshaw. Let's pop it and play some Dungeon. The only one from this version. Published by Melbourne House at sometime the beginning of October 1982. Alright, here we go. This game is the very first time we've had someone trying to be Dungeon Quest or play like Dungeon Quest, rather than be it itself. So this means that I'm represented by the uh, red arrow. The enemy is, in, is the blue at the top, and they say a monster appears. So this is a one of those bargain bin games where several games are lumped in into one that you can't get anywhere else. They're all only on this package of seven games, and this is playing like a role-playing game. So if I want to go left, I have to push L, like in Dungeon Quest. If I want to move forward, I have to push the number four to move four steps. If I want to do two steps, I do two, and if I want to turn right, I turn right. So no other game's done this, this kind of uh, interface. So th th it's it's playing like Dungeon Quest, but it's the very first time we've seen anything like this. So seven to move forward, and then we move on to the next room. It draws it in, flips over to the next side, and then we have to move forward three steps, turn left, and you can see how it works. It's the same interface. It's just all only game that's played like this was been Dungeon Quest so far. I know, right? Get that jar of wax out. It's time to go. Five steps forward. Five steps forward. Here's the one thing that's lacking, though. Innovative Cassette was a combination of games, and Dungeon Quest played like this since the 70s, and you're supposed to look in the book, the paragraph book, of what this room looks like, what's in the room, and things like that. But uh, they don't have this in this, th this compilation. All it is is moving from room to room, so it's a pretty boring role-playing game. It's even showing our weight. It's, it's almost like the most watered-down role-playing game we played here on the show. All right, let's turn to the left. Go, what, six steps up? Okay, no, three steps. Turn to the left again, and then make our room... We haven't seen any enemies except that first room. I decided not to attack them. I moved on to the next screen. And it's still no enemies. All right, let's keep going. Six, turn to the right. Four steps forward, bump into the wall, turn to the right. And then two steps, turn to the left... So yeah, I'm just wandering around using the same interface as Dungeon Quest, but it's not Dungeon Quest. It's a Dungeon Quest variant. Someone's trying to rip off. Okay, we got a monster appeared. Yes. Okay, hit him, hit him. Go, go, go. Look at our wounds. They're going down. Quick. Attack. Attack. It's 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 attacking him, but... And thou art slain. Just, just like in Dungeon Quest. We die really, really fast. I won't play any more of it. That was it. It is a bargain bin role-playing game, which that's very hard to find. Of all the games we play right now on the uh, home computer, it's poor. It's it's a bad game, it, but it is part of a compilation, so you got to give it a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, bre brevity. I know, right? I feel the same way too. We need more charisma. We need more a lot of things to make this a better game. But I'd say of all the games you can play right now, it's it's not one and a half. I'll say two stars. It's still bad. You may get into it if it's part of that compilation, but uh, there's a lot better games you can play out there for home computers, including our next title. Let's play a real role-playing game and a real Dungeon Quest game on the Atari home computer. This is Dungeon Quest Danger in Drindisti. Let's check it out, starting with the box. So Dungeon Quest we originally saw on the TRS-80 in 1979, and it was the Temple of Apshai. Then we saw Hellfire Warrior, which was the official sequel to that in 1980. And then we also saw a few bonus games, like extra games, in the same universe. One was called Morlock's Tower in 1981, and then Date Stones of Ren in 1981. And then we saw expansion packs to the Temple, uh, to the Temple of Apshai. It was called Upper Reaches of Apshai in January 1982. And then we saw the second expansion to the first game, which was Curse of Ra in April 1982. And then they took the second official game, Hellfire Warrior, and they made an expansion for it called Keys of Asheron in August 1982. This one marks the second official expansion to Hellfire Warrior. So is everyone with me on the where we got to where we are now? There's the Danger in Drindisti box. So if you bought this in the store, you can't play this. You have to play Hellfire Warrior, and this is an expansion to that. This is an official add-on. There it is. Flip it over the back. It shows us what the game looks like in the bottom left. Oh, man. You've been called to the court of Euterni, wiz Wizard King of Drindisti. In this expansion for Hellfire Warrior, your king is beset by four powerful enemies, and he's called upon you to vanquish him. 
We have to destroy all four of the powerful enemies, and we'll get into those in a sec. It includes the Book of Lore because you need that to know what everything else is going to be in each room. Besides the box, we also have the ad you would have seen in the catalog showing Hellfire Warrior, the main game, and then the two expansions or add-ons to Hellfire Warrior. And then there's our fi uh, our cassette case. We're gonna uh, cassette. We're gonna pop into our Atari to play. Danger in Drindisti. I know we're gonna need Hellfire Warrior, and we're gonna need a leveled up character too. All right, let's take a look at the, the, the manual. Yes, it requires Hellfire Warrior. You have to be a Dungeon Quest fan to enjoy this game. Yeah, before you start, it's one of the series of supplements. After Temple of Abshai, they had Hellfire Warrior, and this is the second supplement to Hellfire Warrior. Make sure you read everything in closed instructions with care. There it is. The lore to play the game. Bandits are raiding the outlying villages. The entire population of a small town has mysteriously disappeared. A dragon's been spotted flying over a range of neighboring mountains. It's rumored that you're not the worst dangers facing the peaceful people of Drindisti. You've been called to the court, and uh, he summoned us to destroy four powerful enemies. And we're going to take all of them out. So the way this game works is you load up Hellfire Warrior. Hopefully you got a saved character. And then it's going to ask you to load up what expansion or what level of the dungeon you want to play in. And so you put in the D Danger in Drindisti uh, cassette. And then you put, put, put what level you want in. And so the, we'll go to level 7. And that's so where we're going to take out the Glass Wizard. Our first of the many foes we have to take out. And here it is. They're going to break down every room that you go in and tell you what it is. See, the first room is a smoothly polished cave opening to the south as the way out. On the north wall is inscribing a warning. This cave is the property of the glass wizard. Please leave immediately. So we have a, a inscription on the wall of the first room. And then it breaks down every single room and all the monsters you'll see in each level. Traps and treasures as well. All this in the same expansions we've played before. Then level six is going to be the abode of the illusionist, where we have to take him out and all the monsters that are in the illusionist's world or level with treasures. Level nine is the temple of the demon master. We got to take out a demon master too. This game's awesome, at least as far as lore goes. And then it also has the, the lore of why you're taking these people out, why you need to destroy them. It's awesome. Yeah, that's right. Don't forget keys of Asheron. And then all the monsters there too, the traps and hazards and treasures. And then finally, level eight, the realm of mist. To slay its demigod ruler. So we got to take out a demigod too. Gosh, it's incredible. There you go. That's the book of lore and what you'll need to play when you pop in Dungeon Quest Danger of Drindisti. This is by Automated Simulations at some time released in the beginning of October 1982. Here we go. This one marks our 31st Automated Simulations video game we've played here on Chronologically Gaming. This was available on other computers as well, but we're just going to play this version on the Atari home computer. So I'm actually loading up Hellfire Warrior. I'm not even loading up the game because it won't even work. When you load it up, it says you need Hellfire Warrior. So here we are. Thus, thus quote the innkeeper, Hailed and well met, shall I find you a goodly character? Yes. Not the best thing to do. We actually should be loading up a character we've already made because we're going to die very, very fast. All right, that's pretty good. I like that guy. Look at his dexterity. 14, and his ego is 17. That's great. All right, let's do... Chrono is the character name. Wilt thou buy one of our swords? Yay. I'll buy a broadsword. That is so cheap. Three, three gold, definitely. Done. Will I buy shield? Nay. We're just going to get to the game so you can see. Will they buy armor? No. Nay, we won't buy a bow. We won't pawn forth the apothecary? No. And wouldst thou stop with Malaclipse the Mage? Nay. We're going to say no to a lot. We're going to say monster speed is going to be slow. So hopefully you've already played Hellfire Warrior. you got a character level up. We didn't do that. But um, if you did, now it's going to say what disc do you want to play on? And now we take our disc out. We pop in the Dangerous Indrindisti disc. And then we put the... Uh, dungeon level in. So I want to start on level 7, like we read in the manual. It's going to load up level 7 from the Drindisti uh, cassette, and then we put back the main Hellfire Warrior disc. After all that's done, now we can play the expansion. You'd be super stoked and excited if you were a Dungeon Quest fan right now. <laughs> you don't need weapons? We're going to need a lot of weapons. More than just a a wax chest to take out of this one. I really love the font, Ubicor. Yeah, 
it, it's really cool how they did that. Okay, we're in. The back of the dungeon is behind us, and you can barely see the inscription. It's straight ahead. I'm going to move my way forward. So just like we have to do the controls in dungeon, I'm going to walk forward with pushing like five to walk five steps. Five steps. It's a turn-based role-playing game, but it's constantly asking and refreshing the screen for your movement. Okay, and then you can examine the the wall or describe the wall. I can even turn to the right, and you can see this is the first puzzle. The, uh, level 7 actually has a, uh, a a puzzle for you to figure out. Oh, wait, I didn't want to drop anything. No, don't, don't drop anything. Drop my sword. Can I drop my broadsword? That'd be terrible to do. We didn't bring any armor or weapons, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't want to drop it down. So this first room, you were supposed to figure out the puzzle to make it to the next room, and then continue through the dungeons. What Dungeon Quest is now doing, which is better than all the other original games, is it's turning the dungeons instead of just moving around and attacking. Uh, you actually have some uh, a, a little bit of puzzles to, 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 to figure out, and you can't move from room to room uh, by yourself. There, so there's a little reading, like inscriptions on the wall. It still has the role-playing tropes, you know, fighting enemies, ex getting experience, and so forth. But it is a very, very long game. All these expansions, you'd have to be investing hours and hours of time to play. So there's just a quick taste of Danger in Drindisti as we ran into the wall there. I know, right? Oh, man, Paul, if you can check out all the Dungeon Quest games on the 400 Mini, that'd be great. If I knew what you're talking about, because it's currently October 1982, and I have no idea what that is. Just like the other expansion, the Keys of Asheron, I say this is one of the of the above average games you could play on a home computer. So we're going to give it three and a half stars of all the games so far. Lots of fun. If you're a Dungeon Quest fan, there is better role playing games out there than Dungeon Quest because you don't have to type anything in. There's some that um, that uh, you, you had for the Dungeon Quest series that did use a joystick on the Atari home computer. And this one does not. Yes. All right, it's time to put the video game playing on pause. We have no more quarters left in the arcade. Next time on Chronologically Gaming, we're going to unearth a tomb of treasures and maybe unlock something new, which means it's time to read the latest issue of the October issue of Electronic Games Magazine. That's it for today, and like I always say, wandering around in dungeons has always been retro. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9pm Central, so join us and let us know if we missed any games along the way. This video would not be possible without LaunchBox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are perpetually retro, and we will catch you next time.